Hi colleagues, <clears throat> here we are to take some minutes to think about game design. Uh, there's, an, there's not a common and only way of, des of designing the game. In fact, there is not yet a science of game design. We can use some principles, we can read different authors, we can take examples of game designers. So, uh, in this chapter we will cover some of most used references to take some ideas. When we take the challenge of designing a game, we could use some, uh, some of these ideas of software tools and surely we can develop our own. So, some starting aspects to design our video games. First, uh, we should know the users and their interest. Uh, is it a game for children, for adults, for gamers or for general public? Uh, what, what people would be like to play our game? As we saw before, user psychology influences significantly, significantly in game reception and obviously in, in our game design. Our goal should be to motivate, to amuse users, make them enjoy to engage. A good designed game tries to be played entirely, from the start to the end, maybe many times. If we are designing a serious game, as we will see in the next chapter, we should also take into consideration and other things, contests to be learned, skills to be developed and trained, so what's game design? The organized and creative process of taking thousands of decisions about the game we want to develop. How is it going to work in every situation, every detail? Game design is very much like movie scripting or literature reading, writing, but with more levels of difficulty, dynamic behavior. Those decisions should be very organized. It is not an only way of structuring but there are some usual aspects used, mechanics, elements, dynamics, story, aesthetics, technology. We are going to see a little about that. We start check checking the MDA model, one of the most used ways of watching the games for, the, for their design. The basic items are the elements of the game. The game context itself um, determines some of them, main character, enemies, ships, objects for interacting with. But we also have to create the universe of the game in which there will be other elements that enrich it and often determine its success or failure. So we have points, bats, leaderboards, um, players with rankings of our scores, also lies and virtual goods or resources that will be used for collecting or acting. Uh, Some random aspects are needed. We could use cards or dice. Many parts, uh, many parties for the scenery of the game. Sometimes only one simple graphic or maybe hundreds of different background levels. That levels or status of player has to be considered. Some specific contents maybe for the story. There's also personalization of characters and game objects, and even elements of adaptation for different players, cultures, or regions. Starting from, from the elements, you can build the mechanics, the rules that govern the behavior of the elements. Some are very obvious, like the way a bullet goes up and down when it's shooting a shooter, or how two objects collide in our scenario, and what happens then, or the tiles that a player can move in a board game. Others are more subtle, like, uh, such as the way a bonus appears, or how the level difficulty changes if the player fails over and over again with the same enemy. In any case, from the technology view, it's easy to see what the mechanics are. All the code we would have to write for the game to actually happen. That is, the large and small behaviors of each of the elements and their interaction which is with each other and with the user. It's important to, reali to realize that the mechanics will induce user behavior. If we include a collecting mechanic, we are inviting the user to search and store the collectible items. When, if we introduce a limited time mechanic, we cause the user to accelerate their actions to prevent the time from running out. 
Some authors do not differentiate between elements and mechanics and include everything in the same concept of mechanics of a game, referring to the set of elements, the behaviors, and rules. Here you can see some examples of mechanics we, con we could consider in a video game. Movement of player character, of course, and computer control objects, collections of objects to take, player charms in multiplayer games, action points limiting uh, each turn, actions for buying items, way of cutting, deleting, deleting of killing or killing an object or character in a game, we have also random factors, game models and levels, complex mechanics like challenges that are usually combinations of simple mechanics, and all the social aspects in multiplayer games and so on. It's a little more difficult to understand the concept of game dynamics. Dynamics like physics concept, behavior or changing in time. So in game design language, we identify dynamics as what happens when the player conducts with mechanics and how it flows in time. It's basically the gameplay. Mechanics are the technical aspects uh, we have to define and implement, while dynamics are the emergent, player and system interactions. For example, in Monopoly, the classic game, the mechanics are the relationship between the board, the pieces and the rules. The dynamics are the processes and behaviors that arise when users actually play the game. That a player gets richer than the rest, how other player goes into poverty and lose the game, the negotiation users establish. In a role-playing game, for example, the mechanic is a magician appear in level uh, 5. Uh, dynamics could be that users stop shooting and start learning how to spell. If you define a time limit mechanics, what is expected to happen with dynamics is that player feel pressure to finish something, to deactivate a bomb, to find the exit point. When we design a video game, we have to think in dynamics in order to define mechanics. We're going to think about that. And the third part is aesthetics. That's the emotional player response. Obviously, includes the art, the graphics, visual and audio composition of the game. to get something. In game design we think in aesthetics and the emotional response from players to the gameplay. In the Monopoly example, the feeling of tension and joy in the beginning, the gradual loss of interest for the losing players, the joy of winning for the winter for the winners. Mark LeBlanc proposed a decomposition of concept of fun and gives these eight tracks that you can see explained in a kinds of fun web. You have a URL. This different and independent dimension of fun and emotional response nor are all necessary, but usually games entertain with some combination of them. There are these kinds you can see here in the slide. Uh, pleasure for the senses, the way the game makes you believe in the story happening, the narrative of the story the game's seen as a, as a drama, the challenge, feeling the game as a combination of obstacles you have to overcome, the game as a social network, the game as a, uh, an explored territory you have to discover, the pleasure of, of expressing yourself and the way the game allows you to construct whatever you have inside, and finally the game is uh, the pleasure is submission, you fall in it and the time goes by. Of course, it's not a scientific classification. You can think in other kinds of fun, some games use as sense of humor, essential for many games, or fear, or satisfaction. We think in any game we know, it's relatively easy to identify which kind of emotions it brings to us as players. For example, the well-known treacheries, of course, it means a challenge, it makes, our, uh, makes us flow with it. Don't you remember dreaming with Tetris pieces going on and on in our head, in our dreams? It's curious to see how first video games only touch some of our emotions. With no previous experience, there were no much needed to attract our attention. 
as years, as years passed, uh, games had to complicate more and more, and we see if we analyze emotions brought by them. For example, Farmville, one of the first social games, fills our senses with graphics and music in a fantasy farm. We want to grow vegetables and animals with all, with all the social experience and the possibility of expressing ourselves. Maybe you have seen websites uh, filled with different constructions users make with Farmville, with personal distribution of constructions and spaces. In a minor way, uh, main, minor way Farmville brings uh, challenges, discovery, and maybe mercy. See also that this table is quite subjective. Maybe each of you would put some X in different cells than me. If we analyze a modern uh, AAA game like Grand Theft Auto, we see an expected thing. A game with much investment, range to millions of players, to play hundreds of hours, need to mix all kinds of emotions and fun. Sensations, fantasy, story, even social aspects, absent in previous GTAs, are included in last versions. Let's go on with NDA model. So the player uses mechanics to generate dynamics with provoke emotions. In the opposite direction, the game designer tries to generate emotions in players through a dynamics generated by mechanics. Mark LeBlanc is a game designer and educator of video games and game design. He worked on Looking Glass Studios in games like Ultima Underworld 2, System Sock, or Flight Unlimited. He developed uh, Oasis, with each, which is a strategy game I love. It's difficult to find. Uh, it's uh, 15 years uh, time, I think. Um, uh, this game won a 2005 Indie Game of the Year, I think. Uh, Mark reflects on games and software and makes an analogy of understanding the MDA model. Well, what you see this. Mark asks what makes a software program a video game. The answer is fun. The purpose. In a traditional software program, the purpose is very functional, pragmatic. Obtain some reports, move some robot, control some machine. In video games, the purpose is emotional. The game tries to provoke fun, pleasure in its user. Mark asks what makes a software program a video game. And the answer is fun. So in software, we have program code, which execute uh, allows the user to cover some process in order to fulfill some requirements. That's traditional software. Thinking in a game, the starting elements we have are the rules of the game. With those rules, we play a game, a game session. And playing that session, we have fun. Some kind of fun. So here comes the analogy of Mark. When we develop a game with software, we have to develop code to implement some game rules, and that's mechanics. When video game is played, the user experiences the process in a game session through time, and that's dynamics. And with that dynamics happening, the user experiences aesthetics. Here's the Mark's definitions. Mechanics is the rules and concepts that formally specify the game as a system. Dynamics is the runtime behavior of the game as system, and aesthetics is the desirable emotional responses evoked by the game dynamics. And here are the opposite views we mentioned before: the player perspective and the game designer perspective. Here you have some examples of this relationship: With timer element, game developer can program a time limit mechanic. I could get a kind of time pressure dynamics, and the player could experience a dramatic feeling, statics. With food, a food element, food consumption mechanics can be implemented, and this causes time pressure dynamics and dramatic feeling aesthetics. 
So as you see, we can get similar feelings using different elements and mechanics. In general, dramatic tension is conflict and incremental stress. So many things causing conflict and a time pressure could end with this emotion. Another example is uh, munition and weapon elements as mechanics, causing, a, we know, uh, as we know well, a confrontation dynamics and a kind of, all kind of competition emotions. You can find many more examples of the, of, for this MDA approach. It's usual seeing these aspects in game design documents. Let's see more game design views we could, we could use in our designs. Sid Meier is another well-known game designer, author of the famous video game saga Civilization. Sid uses a simple model, saying that the game is a series of interesting choices. So for the, for him, uh, with his approach, designing a game is just defining some those possible choices together with the consequences of each and all their possible interactions. Selection is fine, but action games are based more on activity than on the election, or at least uh, when, or when and how this election is synchronized. A different approach is Chris Garford's. Chris is a game designer from the days of Atari console, founder of the Journal of Computer Game Design, and organizer of the Computer Game Developers Conference. Also author of one of the reference books of the area, The Art of Computer Game Design. He's an author to, to now. Um, he speaks about four elements to consider. The first is representation. Does the game refer to anything else? Look for mental associations between what happens in the game and what player thinks or reminds. The second is interaction. Simplicity, playability, repetition training. Interaction motivates, engages when the player can influence in the game work and get meaningful answers. The third is conflict. The goal is blocked by obstacles. We what we spoke about flow. And the last one is security, safety. This has to do with the player feeling that the complex the conflicts happening not uh, do not bring the serious consequences that would bring, uh, would bring in a real life. This allows to be more open to experimentation and less blocked by conscious process that avoid the risks which limit the enjoyment in real life. In a game, you can play after dying, you can save your progress to start over, and so on. <clears throat> Narrative, when the game has it, uh, requ requires many design skills similar to literary ones. Key elements were well studied in literature, introduction, liberation, escalation of conflict, climax and resolution, um, are still present. Although they can happen in many ways and make cycles, returns with modifications, with all the advantages of interaction. Marthevsky, author seen in game psychology, studies how each game mechanic influences users depending on, on kind of user. So we want to integrate many types of users, we can combine game elements. Rips and Red uh, gives a, give a list of 10 ingredients for a great game, based on studies made to some of those games. There's not a single checklist for making a good game, but knowing this should be a piece of advice. Uh, has already designed any or some of these aspects? We're going to have a, a small look on Jesse Skell's book, uh, The Art of Game Design. Here he proposed what he calls lenses, which are many different points of view he gives to produce or revise the design of our games. Um, here you can see in, the, in this book the vision of a scale for the skills uh, needed for a game designer. An interesting list mixing some technical abilities with very general ones like anthropology, communication, creativity. Psychology, history, visual think, bison thinking. Same scale asks himself, what is the most important of all these skills? And his answer is listening. 
Here you can see an example of scale lenses. That's lens number five, the lens of indigenous value. As you can see, each lens has questions to revise in our game design. What's valuable to the players in my game? How can I make it more valuable to them? What's the relationship between value in the game and the player's motivation? GIS also gives examples of games and design aspects for each lens. If you are thinking in buying a book for game design, consider this the art of game design. Anyway, this, there is a free app uh, for this LED decon lenses you can use to check your designs in Android or iOS. Other source of aspects to be considered in game design, especially for learning-oriented games, is the analysis of James Paul Gee from Arizona State University. You have here the link in the slide to a YouTube video list uh, where Gee speaks about these uh, 13 principles. So in this lesson, we are going to consider the importance of innovation in game design. In video games, doing something new is very difficult. Our minds work with patterns we already know. And repetition in games doesn't always work. For example, there was a flappy bird with only weeks of mobile stores and big revenues, but there were hundreds of world game clones, none of them being minimally successful. So it's important trying to bring some kind of innovation to our game design. You just need to see something special, something different, new experiences. Four of the most important aspects you can consider are thematic innovation, mechanics innovation, aesthetics innovation, and technological innovation. We're checking briefly some examples of each type of innovation. In themes, we can look for contents original or beyond the ones already known in general. For example, in the 80s, we have Papers, Please, Aristopia, the opposite of a utopia, an indecidable society, it's a fictional country, at Soska, where we play as customs officer who gives immigrants approval or re reaction for entrance in country. We have to study each case, the game goes on pressing us to solve more cases, offering bribes, The Sims in 2000 brings for the first time a real-life simulator. Of course, new devices brings new mechanics possibilities. As, as has happened with Kinect or Oculus Rift or HTC Vive in virtual reality games. With GPS, with mobiles, uh, new series of games are being developed. Ingress is maybe one of the first using that. Ingress is a near real time augmented reality massively multiplayer offline uh, pervasive game created by Niantic Labs for mobile devices. The game has a long, uh, complex science fiction backstory with a continuous open narrative. For gameplay, users have to put portals in real and public places of art, historical monuments, etc., and linking them to form triangles has a history behind resistance and lighting and all around the world they are having people meeting, forming groups. Portal has innovative portals in a 3D puzzle. A science fiction mechanic very well combined with gameplay to possibilitate finish each level. Loose Loose 2009 is a not so funny game concept. Uh, the game clears real files of your or your disk. Each enemy ship is a random file. The objective of the game is not explicit. If you do not kill nothing, uh, you know, nothing happens. If you don't touch anything, nothing happens. If you play the game files, they uh, are killed on the screen and erase it on disk. Lose lose is a situation in which you always lose. You have elections, but none, none is, is good. A situation famous in cinema and film war games in 1983 with computers playing thermonuclear war. Superhot is a collaborative game project recently commercialized. Seeing the demo is not as interesting as playing. As you progress in a typical shooter, in this game you can also change time, making things happen slower or faster. As game goes more difficult, it's mandatory to play with precision with time to be able to avoid bullets and kill enemies. 
Looking for aesthetic innovations, we can take the example of Papa Sangre. It's a video game with an almost black screen and gameplay is mainly audio interaction. Using 3D audio and entering simple actions with touch and screen. Near World Search is an action adventure in this person view uh, developed by Electronic Arts. Uh, another game of dystopia where communication is controlled by a dictatorial uh, regime so that a network of runners transmit illegal message messages avoiding government police. Uh, it's an innovative game in camera movement, runner vision, sensation of hate on buildings, the inertial impulse for the movements. The uh, game has almost no HAD. HED and the other player's legs and arms uh, appear on the screen. Recently we have seen the success of Minecraft, a retro, a retro game with voxel style, 3D pixels, with very simple graphics, but a very massive, uh, very massive play in a full constructionist game. It talks a lot about self-expression possibility we have mentioned this in this chapter. And another more recent example, color switch based on colors with simple physics and geometric shapes. Interestingly, it's designed by a colorblind developer and programmed with a visual game engine without programming, without code, build box. And of course, there are technological innovations. Some examples, Folder Quest is a game that uses the operating system File Explorer. It's very silly and simple, but it's interesting seeing a non playing this uh, design tool just for games. Left 4 Dead, world after an apocalyptic pandemic, survivors against infected, enemies are and scenarios are created depending on the player. Or players can play in multiplayer of uh, 4 to 8 and not pre designed levels. The procedural generation is, a, is an important aspect on some games. Adventure Rose, for example, is crowdfunding not yet produced, and the game scenario is created based on the contest or on your, of your disc. Barco de Barco Butler uh, is a Japanese invention of console of 1991 to play catching barcodes, not only of the game, but all, of all type of products. So we finish this lesson. The objective of the game design is to generate a design document, the so-called GDD, Game Design Document. So it has not a fixed structure, but we have these sections you can see on the slide. I have left uh, for you a Google Drive, uh, Google Drive folder with some examples of game design documents for you to check. So I leave you for now with these possible activities. Thank you for watching. See you around. Have a nice week.